Thank you, Madam Chair. Would it be uh, okay if I bring up a panel to expedite the hearing? Thank you very much. I always enjoy visiting with the uh, Best Dressed Committee in the House of Delegates, Ways and Means. Oh, good to see you all. Uh, also, the best hair, I might mention, uh, Boatler. Uh, Boatler won the award for best hair this year. So um, it's, hard to get a, it's hard to get a smile out of that guy. Yeah. Um, Madam Chair, I'm convinced you're probably not going to like my bill, but I want to I want to use this opportunity to <laughs> but I want to use this opportunity to break up the routine. Normally, when uh, we produce bills like this every year that require photo ID to vote, we tell you the same old thing and we get the same old response. But this year we have something different for you. First, I want to start out by saying. Uh, in uh, the U.S. media right now, there's a lot of information that's responding to the Pew report that was recently issued about uh, the issues surrounding America's voting system. Uh, CBS just last night had a story, uh, and their print copy's titled is, Voter Rolls Deeply Flawed. The New York Times just yesterday put out an article, Voter Rolls Are Rife With Inaccuracies, and today I noticed, just doing a Google search, that Al Jazeera is embarrassing us to the world. And they begin saying more than 1.8 million dead Americans remain listed as active voters, some of them continuing to vote in, America, in American elections. And the Pew Report uh, has put a highlight on the fact that basically the data that we have, our system that's in place, one is very expensive. We pay about $4 annually per voter to maintain our voter system. Where in other countries, Canada, for example, it's 34 cents per voters uh, to maintain the voter rolls. With that said, we have, as been, has been highlighted by the Pew uh, Center, uh, the highest rate of inaccuracy. One in every eight voter records contains inaccuracy. Now, I a crafty ABC news reporter decided to take the jury recusal data for the state of Florida in one, pre in one uh, voting district. And what they learned is that 100 illegal immigrants had recused themselves from jury duty because they said, hey, I'm an illegal immigrant. I'm not eligible to vote. But then, or, I'm not eligible to serve on the jury. But then they went and cast a ballot and voted. So we have problems with the system, and, uh, you know, I know this committee has not looked favorably upon a bill like mine that requires ID. I will mention that it allows for your voter registration card, a specimen ballot that's already required by law to be mailed out to voters. Oh, one last thing. My office has a cold. Everybody, it's going through like wildfire. To buy this Sudafed, I had to use my ID. I asked the lady behind the counter, is there an option for me if I don't have an ID? Her answer is no, you can't buy it. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman and members of the committee. My name is Kathy Kelleher, and I'm president of Election Integrity Maryland. We are a nonprofit, nonpartisan group uh, that are dedicated to free and fair elections in Maryland. We've been investigating voter irregularities in the state of Maryland, identifying where irregularities show up how they occur, and why, when they're identified, they aren't corrected more efficiently by the State Board of Elections. Montgomery County, Maryland has a total of 598,309 registered voters. Thus far, we have researched, a small number, 7,000 individual voter registrations. Of these 7,000 voter registrations that we looked at, 5,400 of them have irregularities that can open the door to voter fraud. We are filing a challenge with the State Board of Elections today, turning our evidence into them to help them clean up the voter rolls. It's dead. Our research has identified active voters who have been dead for more than 15 years that are still active in the voting rolls. Whether 
due to clerical errors or failure on the part of the state and county boards of elections to do their due diligence, allowing any irregularities to exist within the voter rolls is opening a door to potential voter fraud. If we authorize them to, for example, if the birth date is 1926 and the person looks like they're 20, say, I'm going to challenge this. We can't do that today. We just say, hey, you don't look like you're 90, but go ahead. We can authorize them to do it. And in my opinion, it's the authorization of the judge at the election place. And two, the doubt we put in the mind of people who are intending to fraud an election and cast an illegal vote. The doubt that somebody may have already been there with their ID or not been there, and they may be questioned. That doubt, I believe, strengthens our ele election process. Voter since my 20s, I am well aware of the historical reasons behind why voter identification is not asked for at the polls. However, we live in a different time. One must show identification for a variety of reasons, whether it's writing a check or driving a car. Why should our rights, one of our rights granted to us by our Constitution, be so compromised by not requiring some form of identification? As importantly, Section 1.7 of the Maryland Constitution states, under laws to be passed for preservation of purity of elections, notes that the General Assembly shall pass laws necessary for the preservation of the purity of elections. Those who note that this legislation would disenfranchise those voters who do not have identification, I contend that until legislation such as House Bill 113 becomes law, it is I who is a disenfranchised voter. For under Maryland's current up to date, our organization has uncovered more than 5,000 irregularities in one county alone, such as duplicate registrations, invalid addresses, and deceased voters who remain on the rolls. And we are just beginning our research. It is our understanding that if a voter has not voted in two consecutive presidential election cycles, he or she may be classified as inactive or removed from the voter rolls. Furthermore, it is our understanding that when a person comes to a polling location and identifies himself or herself as someone listed as inactive on the rolls, that person does not need even a provisional ballot. They are allowed to go right to the machine and cast their vote without identification. This situation in particular, it seems to me, is ripe for fraud. Anyone with knowledge of out-of-date voter registration records could arrive at a polling location, identify himself or herself by the name of an inactive or deceased voter, and proceed to vote with no proof that he or she is who they claim to be. Um, are you aware of a, any instances in which someone has voted illegally in the state of Maryland? Yes. You are? I am. And uh -huh. I don't think it happens on purpose. Maybe it does. We, we know that it happens on purpose in other states because we require photo ID there, and we, we've been able to identify people frauding the election. But when I introduced this bill this year, I had three new cases in Anne Arundel County that came to me, I'm sure there's others, that said when I got to the polling place to vote, somebody had already voted for me. I, I was sort of surprised by this. One of those members is my family member. So I went and I researched it a little bit to find out. Right. And someone in another county voted in their name. Her name isn't Susan Jones, by the way. It's others. My opinion is, you know, the votes we cast select things like who we're going to vote for for president and whether or not we send people to war. So at a minimum, if we're going to require photo ID for this, we should have a system in place. And Delegate Afzali, I don't know if you've had the hearing yet, she has a bill that would pull in the voter, uh, the MVA data to the system. I don't care what system we implement, but the one we have now is broken, and we look the other way, and people are voting fraudulently in this system. And frankly, I called my school system, and I said, you require people to use a photo ID to come into the school these days, correct? The answer is yes. So what happens if they don't have an ID? Well, we run them through a system man manually. I asked for the number of people who went through that system manually. The number was zero because it never happens. This information that pops up about a certain population not having ID, in my opinion, is bogus. And in the instances when they don't have ID, they vote by provisional ballot, which gets counted, unless they've died or deceased previously, and the NBA knows about it, or someone else has voted in their place. And what's going to be the increased cost of providing that large number of provisional ballots, which might be necessary to meet this need? Zero. It's already done as part of the system. I'm also aware that many members, especially my friend, Delegate Lukey, they don't, they don't like this uh, approach. I'm okay with it. I knew that coming here. But what I want to make you aware of is our system that we currently have isn't working. A citizen of Maryland, a citizen who went and voted, 
And on her way in, she happened to be a Republican, by the way, she was told, hey, guess what? I'm also registered in Florida, so I voted twice. It happens in both parties. So this isn't a Republican versus Democrat thing. This is about cleaning up the voter rolls. A lot of money and compares it to Canada an awful lot. How accurate are the Canadian elections? They Am require honest? photo ID. ID. In every state that's passed a voter ID requirement, which, by the way, provides for other things other than photo ID, in every instance, minority participation has increased because people talk about elections more. Where, hey, you got to have your ID. You gotta, there's an advertising campaign that usually goes on by the Board of Elections. And in every instance... Because I've, I've heard numbers such as one-tenth of one percent people were given provisional ballots. Do you have any numbers I on do, that? and I, we just received it. I'll make sure the committee gets it. North Carolina recently implemented this, and I asked the question, how many folks came in without their ID, and they provided us that data? It's, it's a very small number. So there's not really any documentation that there's been any disenfranchisement in these states? Not that I'm aware. Okay. Thank you. I looked at it because the other thing is it seems to be that in Baltimore City we had precincts that were created on addresses that were vacant lots. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this idea that this doesn't go on here in the state of Maryland, I think, is, is uh, very uh, – we're being very blind about it. And uh, I thank you for, for doing this. Do you agree with me on that? Or? Yeah, I don't know a lot about back then because I was in uh, elementary school. <laughs> Uh, but um, I remember. But I will tell you this: Are you, you dating me? You, you don't have to look that far back. We have it today. Thank you, Madam Chair and, and Delegate. Of course, you know I, I uh, love my bill. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and and you know I, I I think you're raising this issue in in good faith. I you know obviously just disagree with it. Um, you on this. You asserted a second ago that in Canada, IDs are required to vote. And I'm looking at the Elections Canada website, which says there are three options. One, you can show photo ID. Two, you can bring two original pieces of authorized identification. I'm not sure quite what that means. Or option three, you can take an oath and have another elector who knows you vouch for you, so that if I show up at a polling place with my wife and I don't have my ID, she can vouch for me. Why does your bill not make that allowance if Canada does? I'm glad to hear they have stronger standards for their free and fair elections in Canada. I'd like to adopt them. You didn't answer my question. Why, why doesn't your bill have that option? I would support that. I never thought about it. Okay. Um, and I, you know, I... Would you support it that way, Delegate? It would be certainly more flexible and less likely to uh, prevent people from exercising their constitutional right to vote. But certainly, can I ask just... <laughs> we really now. like each other a lot. Um, so, if we were to implement what you just suggested that Canada had, we wouldn't have these problems. My goal is to ensure every vote is counted, ensure it's free and fair, and give people that sense that it's right, it's accurate, and that, you know, there is a sense out there that elections are fraught with, um, with fraud. I don't necessarily believe that it's true, but that sense is pretty widespread among a lot of folks, and I think we should do everything that we can to sure it up so that there isn't that doubt to increase turnout. There's 50 million Americans who are eligible to vote and are not registered. We need to reach, that's what our focus needs to be on. Be an issue? Would the judges be allowed to validate identity? So if it's a 90-year-old on the rolls and somebody comes in who's 23, would they be allowed to challenge that? Okay. Well, um, that's not, though, this so legislation. So if we clean up the system, the system's never going to be perfect, but if we clean it up, we still have to have a, the authority for these judges to challenge something that is obviously inaccurate. And the Supreme Court agrees that this is not a hardship on citizens, and especially in light of fraud that has been documented and takes place around the country. So I would disagree with you, respectfully. Okay. Thank you, Madam they all, have a, they all have a voter registration card. They all get a specimen ballot at least two weeks out from the election that they can take in with them. And if they don't have that, if they don't have that, they can vote by provisional ballot. And as long as no one else has voted in their name and they're listed as alive according to the state, their vote is counted.